Hey, it's Marco from PhoneDog.com. Before we get into our new video, I want to talk to you guys about Boost and their current amazing offer. So currently, if you switch to Boost Mobile before the end of this month, so March 31st, 2014, you get 50 bucks off your first smartphone for Boost Mobile, and there's no contracts, and you get unlimited texting, talking, and web for the same flat rate each month. And you'll also find more Boost deals if you click to the annotation next to my face or the link in the description box. So make sure to go check those out and enjoy the video. Hey, it's Marco from PhoneDog.com, and a little over a year ago, HTC introduced a new device called the HTC One. It was a brand new flagship. We never really expected this from HTC, a basically on its knees company back then. And this device had the ability to either make it or break it for HTC in terms of them making a successful product or them making a failure and basically going bankrupt or never making a cell phone again. And HTC has always been a think different company, sort of like Apple. They always fought outside of the box and they made the HTC one and the press went absolutely crazy for really one reason. No one has ever seen an Android device quite as beautiful as the HTC One. So I would like to think of this video as the HTC One revisited one year later. So enjoy. But the HTC One somehow became a device that people viewed as better than most. It wasn't as powerful, but it was just better. The HTC One was radical for the Android market. No one had a unibody device that ran Android, yet HTC made this great looking two-tone aluminum unibody device that just felt great in the hand. It seemed that only a few people still minded not being able to remove the battery, but when they picked up the HTC One, it had the cold touch that only metal phones could give you and these beautiful chamfered edges that only came on the iPhone 5. It was a seriously beautiful device to hold. The device wasn't too large either, only measuring in at 4.9 inches tall, it really fit well in the hand and the rounded back just sat in the palm very well. Perhaps the only misstep with the HTC One was the location of the sleep wake button on the upper left hand corner. Very unusual for any Android device or perhaps any other device, you also had these beautifully micro drilled holes for the front facing speakers that added such a beautiful detail to this device. Displays were sort of a topic of 2013 and will be for the next billion years in mobile tech. 1080p really spawned up last year with the S4, the Note 3, the Nexus 5, and this, the HTC One. The display measured in at 4.7 inches and used the LCD panel with end-plane switching. That resulted into 468 pixels per inch, which is unbelievably sharp. It's one of the best displays in mobile even today. It's clear, it's sharp, and the colors were absolutely spot on and the viewing angles thanks to the IPS was really really good. Viewing any type of content either if it's video, image, or text was super enjoyable. The HTC One wasn't the most powerful device back then. Even when it was announced, the S4 had a 1.9 GHz quad-core processor, while the HTC One came with a slightly lower clocked 1.7 Snapdragon 600 quad-core processor. Which meant the device wasn't as fast as the S4, but thanks to the slightly slower clock speed, it gave a huge advantage for the battery life. 2 GB of RAM was also plenty to run Android and Sense, but this model is actually the Google Play edition, so 2 GB is more than enough to run a stock form of Android 4.4.2. But the performance from the slightly subpar hardware is nothing to laugh at, especially with this Google Play edition. Everything is adequate. Not fast, but super quick. But if you were going to tell me I had to use the HTC One for the next two years, I would happily accept it. The benchmark scores aren't very good compared to the S4, the Note 3, or any other flagship in everyday usability, but I have not found a single application that slowed this phone down. Multitasking is flawless, browsing the web of Chrome is flawless, you can see the trend with this. Now back to the lower clock speed and battery life. The HTC One has a 2300 mAh battery, which compared to the S4 and the upcoming S5 is small. But the days I've used this as my daily driver resulted into over a day with the same charge, so no worries. I'm not a huge fan of Beats Audio or really care that much about superior audio quality. If it's good to my ears, it's pretty good for me. But the HTC One changed the way it looked at good. Boom out is some weird term that HTC created to describe how good these speakers are. For one, they are front facing which is a huge win. If you want to hear something, shouldn't the speaker face towards you? Secondly, they are true stereo speakers which means if you watch videos you can actually hear something moving across the screen. For example, here's the HTC One playing the LaFerrari promo and the iPhone 5S playing the same video. Listen and play close attention to the differences between the iPhone 5S and the HTC One.
Now, the HTC One had deeper and very full tone coming off those speakers, and they absolutely changed the way I viewed videos and Netflix on the HTC One. Now, this is almost unfair to the original HTC One since we have the Google Play Edition, but even my experience with a normal HTC One of Sense was pretty flawless. The only thing I could admit is Blink Feed. Now, you're looking at Blink Feed on the larger HTC One Max. Now, this basically allows you to get information from sites, social feeds, and more in one continuous scroll called a Blink Feed. Think of it as a mix of Samsung's new Mac Magazine UX and Windows Phone's What's New section. There was no choice or ability to remove it from the original HTC One, which was slightly disappointing, but I could live with it and I'm sure you could as well. If you do grab the Google Play Edition, you'll have a clean vanilla form of Android. This flavor is actually 4.4.2, the latest version of Android KitKat. It's quick, clean and doesn't have that much to show off, but it sadly limits the camera software that was found on the normal HTC One. The HTC One also made a buzz with their cameras. Not the 2.1 megapixel wide angle front facing camera, but their 4 ultra pixel rear facing camera. Now 4 ultra pixels and megapixels are the same thing, but the difference lies of how large the pixels are. The pixels are larger on the HTC One, which means every single pixel on that 4 megapixel sensor is a larger size, which means more light will go in, but Sadly, with a smaller megapixel count, you do lose fine details. So the result is in daylight a fuzzy photo, good enough for Facebook but not for any kind of prints, but when you drop the light, you get spectacular low light performance with low noise issues. As an overall camera, it was fine, but HTC had to put some kind of sharpening to their photos because it was only 4 megapixels, and the results of that gave some really ugly weird patterns, very similar to Moiré and aliasing, but it's definitely different. It's more like clutter and artifacts than really weird and fine lines in terms of detail. So I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's not very pretty. So the HTC One is now over a year old, and the new HTC One is right around the corner, but the HTC One is still very relevant in our mobile world, with constant updates and very good ratings amongst its competitors. I would buy this phone today. I really, really would. But it was really nice taking a look back at this phone to remind us how really good of a phone this was. So let us know if a comment below if you have an HTC One and how much you like or dislike this phone. Also give this video a like and make sure to hit that subscribe button for future videos. My name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. You can follow me on Twitter at PhoneDog underscore Marco. And I'll see you guys in the next video.